Hi and welcome guys, here's a new video about Blender and ZBrush and this time about combining two hard surface models created with Blender to one. There are a couple of ways to do this, but I'm using ZBrush and Dynamesh because I think that's a very effective way to do this and it leads to high quality. But first, let me create these two hard surface models with Blender. The first one we created in the last tutorial. Now I will extend this here by adding a cylinder and in the end this will be a kind of connector for tubes that come from the left and the right side out of this thing here and will be connected to another model that we're going to create and that is located at his chest a kind of armor or I don't know yet okay let's position this find a location and after that, I switch to edit mode and I will again add an edge loop right in the middle, switch to face selection mode and select all these faces here on the left side. Beware of the clipping. Okay, now remove the faces and then I will add a mirror modifier. Okay, clipping enabled. And then I will extend out the parts on the left and on the right sides. Remove this face here and then I can scale the outer edge up. Let me enable here the screencast keys. Just notice that you have no idea which keys I'm pressing. Okay and now I press the E key and then immediately scale this up using S. Okay, and now another extrude for the x-axis direction. Well, at the moment it looks a little bit like a bone <laughs> or, or a dumbbell. But I think it will look cool in the end. Okay, let's scale this inwards and then extrude it to the inside okay and the last time scale this to zero and don't forget to remove the duplicates And what I do now is I will add some bevels because this should look really crisp and clean for it is a hard surface model. Press Ctrl B for the beveling, add another segment by rotating the mouse wheel one time. Yeah, and that looks really nice. I think I will add another edge loop here. Great, that's a nice basic shape. Now let me add a small insert here by adding some more edge loops. Just Ctrl R and move them together. And then I scale this in, this middle, middle edge loop. Okay. So that's it for the base mesh. We will add more details to this. Then I will increase the resolution in ZBrush and use some nice alphas. But before I can export this out to ZBrush, I have to find a good position for this connector and change the shape of the mask so that it fully covers the connector. So I will fasten up the video now for changing this shape. This is just 
selecting edges. I will hide the connector object for this so that I can see it a little bit better. Press H key to hide this and then bring some of these edges to the front. And once I'm happy with that, I will export out these models separately. This means I select here this mask, press export as OBJ. Don't forget to select this selection only. This is my face mask for this guy, OBJ. And the next object is the mask cylinder. And now I have two OBJs that I will import as subtools to ZBrush. I use ZBrush 4.7. Here it is. And now I select my subtool, press import. And find my OBJ for the mask, press open. And now I can just drag this in, switch to edit. And now I have here my first subtool. And when I show here these polygons of this model, the poly frame, then you can see that the resolution is very low. But now I will switch to Dynamesh and increase the resolution to, let's say, 512. Then I press Dynamesh and the resolution will be increased. You can see this directly here, the polyframe. And what I can do now is I can enable my symmetry and smooth out the surface of this model a little bit. I do this by holding the shift key pressed, which will enable the smoothing in ZBrush. And after that, let's append the second OBJ, press append, select another tool that will be added here as a subtool. For example, the cylinder doesn't really matter which tool it is because we will import the OBJ after that. So first select the subtool, then press import. And after that, choose the OBJ for this cylinder, for this cylindric object. And here it is at the right position. And the next step is to merge these two objects. Here you can see the polyframe. I will increase the resolution by dividing this one time. Press divide here. Now we have a higher resolution. And then I go ahead and select the first subtool, open this merge panel, and now I can press merge down. Or I could even press merge visible because we have only two objects visible here in the scene that we're going to merge. Okay, now these objects are merged here. You can see it in the subtools panel to one object. But there's one problem. You can see this seam here where the objects are merged together. And now I could use a brush like smooth or move tool or whatever. I won't get rid of this seam. It is like the geometry of these two objects is separated. But what I want is a real merge and therefore I will use Dynamesh. Now I'll do this by wiping over the surface with the control key pressed and the left mouse button down. Just wipe with the mouse over the surface and the Dynamesh is applied. And now these objects are merged. This takes a while. And when it is ready, you can see that this seam kind of disappears and now I can hold the shift key down and use the smooth brush and smooth out this edge here and look at this what a nice transition you get. Okay that's great now what is left for this tutorial I could use an alpha now 
and show you how to add some details by painting in these alphas. For example, this one. And before I do this, I will divide the model just one more time to increase the resolution. Now I have a really dense model. And I hold the control key pressed and drag in this alpha. With the control key pressed, it is carved into the surface. I can do the same here for the outside of the connector, but I don't press the control key and it is added to the surface. Like that. Okay, I will stop here. I think you really get the idea. What you can also do is to change the matcap to have a different rendering, a different style for this model than it looks like this, for example. In the next tutorial, we will create the other parts of the armor for this character and then we will add more details. And after that, we will start retopology. Thanks a lot for watching this. Thanks a lot for subscribing to my channel and I really hope to see you soon here back on JNM.